Putting a muscle to the GDFL netball show for round 13. A little bit of a lonely uh, panel here this morning, but I do have the delightful Donna Francesi joining me. Just the two of us here. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Fi Fiona. Yeah. And um, what do you mean? Like, yeah. it's just us. It's all about us. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we don't, we don't need Amanda here. It's very quiet without Amanda, that's for sure. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how her votes go a little bit later yeah, on in the show. Yeah, I think she gets a big fat zero for that fee. Yeah. Just quietly, I might be able to catch her. <laughs> <laughs> could be something to catch up to us. I know, I know. I missed out last week. Um, look, we're going to have a quick look at our round 12 games. We were. Um, I think we all got six, actually, in, in the votes. I don't think there were any upsets um, over the weekend. No, I think it was pretty easy over the yeah. weekend, wasn't it? Um, so, firstly, yeah, we've got Belfast Hill 45, defeated Winchelsea 25. I think you're... Uh, you're you were picked 13 goals? I picked 13 goals, dear. Yeah, so it was 20. It wasn't yeah. bad. I was seven off. Yeah, I, you I reckon get 10, 10 points I reckon there. I should get five. No. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Um, try, and just having a look at the Bell Post Hill team on the weekend, um, Mel Holmes played half a game in goal shooter. Yeah, she did play half um, a game goal shooter along with Jess Crow playing the other half. Yep. I'm um, interested to see though, though, because Mel did not come back on the court, yep. so um, she had half a game half a rest game. there. Fee. Yep. Interesting. I know that we had um, Matt on last week, and he did say that he was he was working with. Um, you know, having a look at different shooting options and whatever, just in case things aren't working. And you know what, he's got the benefit though, yeah. Fiona, like um, six rounds to go, yes. he's got the benefit of like playing around yeah. and, and, you know, having look, a feel. They're sitting in second position they ahead are. of East Geelong by a game. Yep. Um, it'll be interesting in those close games, I know that they do come up against Werribee again as well as East Geelong. Yep. So two tough games for them, who he'll play and what will happen in those games. And I guess it will depend on the game and on the day, but yeah, absolutely. Um, it'll be interesting to see what does happen there. And it's interesting to see um, Winchelsea too, Fee, um, Angie Mawson didn't take the court at all, so it would be interesting to see why that didn't happen. She's been yeah. playing like the game yeah. over the past few weeks, didn't take the court at all. At but all. Um, So whether there's yeah. an injury cloud there no. or, or what's, what's going on. Well they on. did have a list of 11 there, they didn't play Shirley Warren, so she was the only one who didn't take the court. So I think it might be a case of them having a little play themselves and just um, seeing where they can co go to from here. Absolutely. Uh, the next game, Thompson 40 defeated Corio 26. Good win by Thompson, but yeah. a really convincing win actually. Um, I know that we all all did pick Thompson over Corio. So. We did. Uh, Mel Philpot again, 29 goals. Well that done, takes Mel. her tally to 400 actually, Fiona. And well done, Mel. Do you know she's only 88 games behind oh, yeah, um, Kim. Oh, do I say games? Games. Yeah. Well, yeah. goals <laughs> behind Kim, who shot 31 on the weekend, by yep. the way. So, um, which is not a bad effort for Mel. Absolutely. Good for her this season. She did go really well. Yeah, look, I, I think she's going to pretty much have secured that second position yep. there because the next one down is Katie Garner. Yeah, and she's 100 behind her, yep. so um, yep. yeah, I think Kim and Mel are sort of up there and will stay at the top, top two for this season. Yep. Uh, the next game, Werribee 62 defeated North Geelong 21. And, you know, Werribee sitting still undefeated on the ladder. Um, yep. Top position there, Absolutely. a game in front of Bell Post Hill. Yep. And by the looks of their team, um, you've got it. I do. I do have it. Um, so Werribee, Michaela Ward is back. Played the four quarters this this yep. week. Um, so obviously that injury scare that she had a couple of weeks ago was probably only minor. I would say. Or and, um, resolved. Yep. Yeah. And um, Ellie Tubbs, goal shooter for the four quarters. So yep. um, I think she sort of secured her position there, don't you think? I, Fee? I like think she's been so. playing there quite regularly, and I think um, she settled in quite well in that position. Yeah, absolutely. And you know they're they're just getting stronger and stronger. Um, can't wait for some of those big clashes though. Yeah, it'll be interesting that are, that are coming up for so. sure. Uh, the next game, Bannockburn 49 defeated Belmont 20. 20, oh. yeah, 29 goal win there. Yeah, um, really, really strong win to Bannockburn, and they they did lose the week before yeah. um, and we did say that we thought they were going to come back. Well I think they knew in themselves that they had to bounce back. I mean this was a, um, a really good game for them and um, they just proved that they can bounce back after such a heavy loss the week before so well done to Bannockburn. Yeah. Um, Grace Kennedy only played half a game. First, okay. first one in um, keeper and the last quarter down in goal shooter so um, yeah, look, I, I don't know what, whether they're just trying a few things, trying to figure out what's going to work. Um, but, you 
know, I guess they need to do that as well coming. Well, the, the thing is with Bannock Bantry, they're sitting fourth on the ladder, Fiona, um, and they're only a game away from third spot too. So, and as we said last week, that those first five positions are very close. Like there's only a game separating them all. So, um, yeah, well, that was, you know, I think Bannock that was a must win for them and well done to them because they yeah. did, did secure that yeah. um, point. So. Um, the next game was uh, the Geelong West game and Inverleigh 74 defeated Geelong West 18. Physical, <laughs> physical, physical game. Inverleigh yeah. girls are physical, um, very physical. And, and do you know what the thing is with Inverleigh too? They are a big team. Yeah. Like they're, they're a tall team too. And um, look, they go hard at the ball. I think we both know that. We've both struggled, Anarchy and the West, all, I mean, all year we have. But, yeah. um, you know, you get up to those physical teams and... and it just goes to show how far ahead they are on us. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? But those, so. those three um, Red West girls have really settled well into yeah. that team, and they would have been so comfortable playing at West because that was obviously their home ground prior to it. So they yeah. knew the courts, they knew everything about that. Yeah. Um, you know, they're a great team, Kimberly. Um, yeah. And their percentage is actually higher than Bannock Burns, and they just are behind them in a in a by a game. A game. Um, and that's what I said. Like the first five is only a game separating each of them. And um. And like going back to East Geelong, their percentage is higher than Bell Post Hills, who's sitting second. Yeah. So it, it it's just going to be really close. It's like going to take some of those wins and whatever that, that yeah. really change. Yeah. They had to tread carefully. They all do. of them. Yep. Um, the last game, East Geelong 63 defeated Anarchy five. It was very cold at <laughs> Anarchy. Like really cold. Um, East Geelong didn't have a problem though. Yeah, no. Nah. East <laughs> Geelong a great team. I unfortunately missed seeing them when they played West. So I haven't actually seen East um, Geelong play. But what happened to Anarchy? Five goals. Were they there? Were they on the Were they on the court? Oh no, they were because I was sitting in that cold wind and that rain. It was bloody freezing down there. Um, look, East Geelong. I mean, they look great. They look great against a team like us. But as you say, if you get into those higher teams, the Werribees and the Bell Post Hills, like, that's where they need to perform and that's where they need to be at. Um, it's easy to come onto a side like our, our teams um, and to like the likes of Cryo yep. and perform the way they did on Saturday, but it all depends yep. on who, how they perform against Werribee and Bell Post Hill. And again, um, Sonia Harris, three quarters in centre. Very vocal on the court, Sonia Harris always has been. Um, yep. But their drive down that centre with her in the centre was remarkable. Yeah. Like so it was getting, really good. She's getting very, very close to qualifying. She must be um, up there, for yeah, for sure. I know that um, yep. Amanda's been keeping an eye on that, so we will. She has. And Amanda will ask, oh no, hang on, she's, she's not, not here, here, so we can't. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to have a, a quick look at our tally. Um, I think we all, there's no actual change in, in the positions. The positions You're because we all got six. Um, so Amanda, 53, myself, and 48, and Donna. You should be 43, so I don't know what hey, Fenner's done there. Uh, Fenner, you did me out a point. I'm meant to be 43. I don't think you can it's add It's closer properly. to my age. <laughs> like going back to 40. All good. Um, so it'll be interesting next week after Amanda's after, votes After, and we have a special guest doing Amanda's yeah, vote. Absolutely. Special guest. So we'll be back after the break. around you long. I'm going to tell you how football is